Today we're going to learn about Google Earth, which is a great tool for doing a lot of things. You should have a Google Earth shortcut on your desktop. It will probably look a little bit different than mine. Uh, it should have a little icon to it. Mine um, doesn't for some reason, but that's okay. When you first open up Google Earth, you're going to see something, something like this, the Earth. This is a GIS program, which stands for Geographical Information System. And what it does is it takes imagery from satellites, puts it all together, and gives us a very realistic, lifelike view of the Earth. The first thing we're going to do is familiarize ourselves with the interface of Google Earth. Like most programs, we have the typical keys up top, File, Edit, View. When I need to save, of course, I'll go to File. We have the main window that shows the Earth. And we have three important parts of this taskbar over here. We have the search bar, the places bar, and the layers bar. Any one of these can be minimized to get it out of the way. We can also come in between them and move them up and down to reshape them. I have several things to show you about Google Earth, so I'm just going to start going through them one at a time. I want to see a certain place in Google Earth, all I have to do is come here to my search bar, make sure that I'm on the Fly To tab, and I can type in any place in the world that I want to see. The more information I give, the easier it will be for Google Earth to find the place that I'm looking for. What I've done here is pick the city. Rome, Italy. If I wanted to pick a certain address, it would be much more important that I had more information. For example, 6820 Fate Avenue is the address of Baltimore Community High School. But I can't just stop there because Google Earth won't know which, where to go. I need to have a comma, Baltimore, Maryland, and what's even better is if I know the zip code. It won't appear quite so choppy on your own screen. As I'm recording it, it sort of slows down my computer and makes things um, not quite as easy to see. So here are a bird's eye view of our school. And if we zoom in using the mouse wheel, you'll see that we have our bus loop. Here's the field, parking lot. Here's Fade Avenue, which most of you walk down to get to. What's even cooler is I can come over here to my navigation bar, click on this little orange guy, drag him off, and after a second or two, these streets are going to light up blue. And that means that any one of those streets is available for what's called street view. So I'm going to cl click right down here and drop the little orange man. And we're going to hop into what's called street view, which is exactly what it sounds like a view of this place as it would look like on the street. Google Earth is always good at finding directions for us as well. Up in the search bar, there's a tab just for directions. And I can put in the names of cities or full-blown addresses. I'm just going to do Richmond, Virginia to Baltimore, Maryland. So if I were going um, from, from home back up to Baltimore, and it will show me the route on the map, it will give me actual turn-by-turn -turn directions on how to get there. And at the very bottom here, it will tell me the distance in miles and about how long it would take in a car. As we look at this overhead view of Baltimore, I've got lots of little icons on the screen. They'll indicate certain different things. Some of these are actually pictures. 
Some indicate hot spots like U.S. Lacrosse Hall of Fame Museum. This is probably a museum. And I can decide what's on my screen and what's not on my screen using layers. Right now I have certain layers that are turned on. I have borders and labels, which allows me to see the names of places and the borders. So I can see the border of Baltimore City right here. If I unclick that box, that all goes away. I also have the places layer turned on. If I turn that off, there go the places. And turn off photos. And there are lots of layers for you to play with. I would suggest keeping borders and labels turned on. And I'm going to point out at least one more really cool layer. So what I'm going to do is using the, the scroll wheel, I'm going to zoom in to Baltimore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the mouse wheel and pull the mouse down a little bit. And I can actually move. Get a better view of Baltimore, and I'm going to turn on the 3D buildings layer. And after a couple of seconds, the buildings in Baltimore will start, will start to pop up. And I get a true 3D view of what that actually looks like. Since I already have a nice view of Baltimore here, I'm going to show you one of the coolest features of Google Earth. Not the most useful, but still a lot of fun. If I come up here to the Tools section, I can enter what's called the Flight Simulator. And trust me, even though the F-16 is cooler, I'm going to try and fly around in this little SR-22. It's much, much easier. So I'm going to press Start Flight. And it's going to allow me to actually fly around the place that I'm looking at right now on Google Earth. This is going to end up being really choppy since I'm recording it. It'll be a lot easier for you. And it definitely takes some practice. Um, if you've never flown an airplane, what you might not realize is that in order to move up, you actually have to press down um, and vice versa. Um, so I'm not doing a very good job right now, but I just wanted to stop for a second to show you that you can actually fly around certain places. Um, and it's a really neat way to explore um, new areas. So give that a try. I want to talk for a few minutes about some of the tools that we can see on the top here. Some of these will be very important as we progress through Google Earth. At the moment, I want to talk to you about this tool right here, which will allow me to see the sunlight as it moves across the landscape. So I'm going to click that button, and this toolbar pops up, and it will allow me to change the time and show me what certain parts of the world would look like at certain times of day. So, in other words, when they would be in the light, when they would be in the dark. I'm going to unclick that now. Another really important tool right here is that not only is it just Google Earth, but I can check out other places too, including Mars, um, the moon, and the night sky. So if I just click moon, after a few seconds, the view will change. and that will be the moon. Now you can't do street view on the moon, uh, but there are lots of things that you can look for on the moon by turning on certain um, layers here on the left, uh, different moon landings, different pictures, um, and it's a lot of fun. You can also check out Mars and the night sky. Another important tool, I'm gonna switch back to the Earth real quick. is what's called the, the Paths Tool. I'm going to go back to Baltimore. The Paths Tool is just that. It lets me make a path around a certain place. So let's just say I'm doing some sightseeing in Baltimore. I'm going to click up here to create a new path. I can give this path a name, I'll call it Around Baltimore. And I can move this cursor around, and as I click, it will create a path for all the places that I click. 
I'm going to go to style and color right here, and I'm going to turn color to an orange and the width of a line of the line up a bit so I can see a little bit better. There we go. That's better. And I can I can, I can jet all around Baltimore with this path, and I can save this. Another great thing about this is I can turn over to measurements tab. It'll tell me exactly how long this path was. This was 6.1 miles. This is how I measure out my runs um, when I'm jogging. I hope you're starting to see the power of Google Earth and the amazing tool that it can be. Uh, your assignment is to go on Edmodo and find the worksheet. Um, and it's going to ask you to take some pictures all around the Earth. You'll do that by pressing the print screen button, which you'll recall takes a picture of your entire computer screen and pasting those pictures onto the worksheet. Good luck.